uh, other medical interventions. So this is something which uh, we need to remind from time to time. Now the topic is intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy. And uh, this is a reversible type of uh, uh, issue, uh, hormonal issue, uh, actually dependent upon hormones which uh, uh, affect the uh, liver function and uh, because of which there is stasis of uh, the liver products within the liver and they pile up and accumulate to cause issues. This is the most common. This is the most common uh, pregnancy uh, liver disorders. Of course, if you look at others, then there are uh, uh, hepatitis, viral hepatitis is one. Uh, then uh, liver dysfunction uh, associated with uh, hypertensive disorders like preeclampsia, uh, HELP syndrome, part of that. And uh, then other liver problems, the uh, cholelithiasis, of course, so that's uh, again one of the problems that can be there. And uh, in addition to that, other problems which would be comparatively less common in this age. But associated with pregnancy, this is the one which is most common. And uh, the main characteristic features generally are those of generalized itching, which generally starts from the soles and of the uh, feet and palms of the hand. Uh, there are no other skin manifestations except for uh, those which are a result of skin scratching. And uh, this usually results in the late part of the second trimester or early part of third trimester, usually in the second half of pregnancy. Uh, and uh, the incidence is variable. We'll come to that. There's no clear etiology. There are three main uh, factors which are associated with that, generally said to be genetic, hormonal, and environmental. Diagnosis is based on physical examination. Of, and before that, actually, the patient's complaints and laboratory findings and essentially uh, ruling out other liver dysfunctions. The defect involves actually, as was said earlier, because of piling up of bile salts as the liver uh, finds it difficult to excrete the bile acids and uh, bile salts and bile acids, they accumulate and uh, bile salts which are released into the skin, they cause that intense pruritus. It has been seen that certain populations and certain areas, there is a higher incidence. There is some repetition of this, but in Chile, it has been found to be uh, 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 a high prevalence of uh, intrahepatic cholestasis. And again, within Chile, there is a, a community particularly where it is even more common. Most, uh, not most, but some of the cases, about 15% of cases is uh, are sort of known to be associated with certain genetic uh, uh, issues. And uh, one uh, which needs to be remembered is that there, because of that genetic problem, there is what is known as multi-drug resistance protein uh, elicitation, which is known as MDR3. And uh, there are multiple uh, mutations of that. Because of that, uh, the uh, situation in the liver that gets affected, and there is problem in excretion, in binding and excretion of the wild salts. So uh, that genetic issue also runs in families. And uh, therefore, it, it is important that uh, when we come across a patient, we ask about any familial tendency of that or uh, association with gallstones, or also history of polystasis with oral contraceptive pill, particularly combined oral contraceptive pill, because that has more of estrogens, and estrogens are known to uh, be associated with that. So that was about the genetic. This previous slide showed the genetic mutation which may occur and which can result in development or elicitation of uh, uh, this MDR3, that is multi-drug resistant protein 3, which affects liver function and results in intrahepatic cholestasis. This is the simply put thing that you can do it like that. Right. 
second is hormonal and uh, it is uh, because of uh, susceptibility of uh, the system to estrogens which are known to cause uh, cholestasis and uh, again the mechanism is uh, that there is a, a, a problem with the uh, uh, getting rid of the bile salts and one of the mechanisms is that uh, there is an inhibition of uh, hepatocellular bile salt export pump and in pregnancy all steroids including estrogen and progesterone they are increased many folds and particularly as pregnancy advances there are more and more uh, of uh, these hormones their concentration is higher and uh, those women who are genetically predisposed, they have uh, this uh, greater sensitivity to estrogens. And uh, because of that, of course, uh, that just proves that hormones are associated with that. Similarly, in patients who have multiple pregnancies, again, all uh, uh, symptoms and signs as they are generally enhanced and multiplied in uh, multiple pregnancies, similarly, there is a higher incidence or higher amounts of estrogens which are in circulation. So they, uh, these patients would be more prone to develop ICP. There is uh, also said to be certain environmental factors because it has been seen that uh, the severity of uh, ICP is usually higher in uh, winters. So maybe the external temperature has something got to do Similarly, uh, uh, there is some suggestion that selenium deficiency in the diet, uh, that's uh, one uh, element which is part of many of the enzyme systems. And because of its deficiency, perhaps some of the uh, enzymes may not be working adequately. And uh, so copper excess and selenium deficiency, these have been implicated in uh, the uh, development of ICP. So these are environmental factors. One is the environmental temperature and second is these uh, elements which are either deficient or higher in the diet. Two of the bile salts uh, acids are particularly elevated in uh, ICP. They are taurocholic acid and toro deoxycholic acid. And uh, uh, these actually, both of these, uh, these bile acids, they get uh, uh, influenced by urso deoxycholic acid, the drug that we use urso, and uh, that drug has particular effect on these two uh, bile acids. Again, coming to the incidence, it varies throughout the world. Uh, there is family clustering prevalence in certain ethnic groups, geograph geographic variation, like in South America, it is higher. Within Europe, the incidence of ICP is rather low. But in Scandinavia, it is higher. In Scandinavia, it is more than 10%. Within Europe, it is less than 1%. So, and uh, South Asia also is a little more prone to that. And uh, South Asia, South America, and Scandinavian countries. A Chilean population, as I was referring to earlier, has a 16% incidence of ICP. And there is a subpopulation of Chile, uh, Araucanos Indian, Araucanos Indians, and there and those the incidence is twenty eight percent. So, familial uh, incidence clustering has something to do with that. Seasonal variation, apart from that, advanced maternal age, personal or family history of cholesterol, contraceptives uh, again that can kind of substanti substantiates the role of uh, estrogens and multiparity also seems to uh, have uh, some uh, role in that or they, that makes women more susceptible to develop and again multiparity the incidence is quite high in those presentation is usually by pruritus starting in the second or third trimester and uh, uh, rarely occurs in first trimester and uh, character characteristically it starts in the soles and palms and progresses to trunk and face may affect all areas of the body and more uh, intense at night. Jaundice uh, is not a characteristic feature of ICP, but it can uh, appear in uh, 17 to 75 percent cases and uh, one, uh, within one month of uh, starting. The 
level of bilirubin is not really very high. It reaches only up to about five. And therefore, jaundice is not that. But if you have a patient with jaundice in pregnancy, then uh, differential diagnosis would be ICP also amongst others. And if uh, there is steatoria and vitamin K deficiency, uh, that would indicate fat malabsorption. And then vitamin K may have to be administered to prevent undue bleeding, particularly PPH. Amongst differential diagnosis, acute fatty liver of pregnancy, dermatitis, gallstones, those conditions which cause skin uh, issues like pruritus and those which are associated with liver disorders and uh, associated with pregnancy are particularly these three, three acute fatty liver of pregnancy, not common, but it's a serious condition, hepatitis in pregnancy, uh, that again, not uh, only uh, related to pregnancy, but it has its own implications and preeclampsia. So diagnosis, pruritus without a rash, elevation of serum, bile acids and or aminotransferase levels. We'll talk about that in a little while. And absence of other liver disease at beyond 25 weeks of pregnancy. When uh, we look at the lab studies, so uh, most specific and sensitive marker of ICP is uh, estimation of bile acids, which normally are 0 to 6 micromoles per liter. And in pregnancy, they rise a little bit and up to 11, as a matter of fact, generally are considered to be uh, a level at which no action may be required. But uh, uh, specifically, if uh, they, they are 10 or more than 10 micromoles per liter, then one should uh, uh, exercise caution and uh, then observe the patient and monitor for any further deterioration. So far as the transferase, that is ALT and AST are concerned, they uh, are raised uh, sometimes to not very high levels, but they can raise up to 25 times more of more than the normal level. Alkaline phosphatase uh, can ra rise up to four times, but this is a hormone which also is produced by the placenta and that uh, in later weeks of pregnancy, is uh, uh, its concentration is higher anyway. Then colic acid level significant. These are the investigations which uh, generally we do not as a matter of routine carry out. But if you do, then there is uh, amongst these bile salts, colic acid or acids by colic acid is, uh, it, it, its level becomes uh, uh, more, uh, it, its increase is com comparative to others is uh, greater. And uh, there is another one which is uh, kenodeoxycholic acid that uh, is not raised so much. And as a matter of fact, if both of them are estimated, then uh, the ratio increases in favor of colic acid and that also indicates uh, ICP. As total bilirubin, as I said, that hardly ever it crosses five milligram per deciliter and mild elevation of GGT, gamma glutam glutamyl transferase, that occurs, but if that is uh, very high, that indicates that there may be a genetic component to this liver disease, GGT. Bile acid levels suggested for diagnosis and uh, management of ICP, uh, preferably if that is possible, that should be done uh, to monitor the uh, uh, prognosis and monitor the uh, progress of pregnancy also. But there is, as, as uh, written here, no uniform activate on the criteria. Uh, uh, another problem is that many of the laboratories, they take a uh, uh, longer time in reporting back uh, the levels of uh, bile acids. That's why uh, the diagnosis is not kind of uh, formulated uh, uh, immediately. On the other hand, ALT is uh, the more sensitive of the conventional uh, liver tests. Uh, and uh, when there is pruritus uh, without any skin rash and there is elevation of ALT, then one can safely make a diagnosis of ICP. Uh, and values uh, can be quite high. Other tests are, are a complete list of these tests. So total serum bile acid levels, bilirubin, transaminases, PT, PTT, INR, 
GGT, colic acid, keno deoxycholic acid to evaluate the ratio. These have been already referred to. And total bile acid levels can be followed every two to three weeks. They are not to be done too frequently to guide the therapy and timing of delivery. And coagulation studies and transaminase levels should be monitored to measure progress of the disease. If they are stable, that would mean that uh, you can continue with that. Uh, we'll come to the importance of uh, this monitoring just in a while. So once the diagnosis is made, then the treatment should be initiated uh, as soon as possible. Uh, general outcome is concerned, uh, the mother is none the worse for it and doesn't suffer really too much and there are no long-term consequences. But uh, it is the fetus uh, that can, uh, or that may be the victim of uh, this disorder and uh, uh, there can be uh, uh, quite a few things so far as uh, fetus is concerned. One is that there may be premature delivery, uh, which may have to be iatrogenic because of the condition. There can be uh, meconium staining and uh, dis uh, fetal distress. And uh, thirdly, of course, fetal demise, which uh, can sometimes occur suddenly. So therefore, it is important that the condition is recognized earlier and uh, timely treatment uh, is instituted with the uh, 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 delivery in at the appropriate time. You have to balance between uh, maturity of the uh, fetus and the danger that it is exposed to inside the uterus because of worsening condition. Uh, so far as maternal considerations are concerned, sometimes the intense pruritus is uh, intolerable and it might uh, force one to consider uh, uh, delivery. Now, uh, if you just look at this statement that because of pruritus, you may be, your hand may be forced into conducting uh, or in, uh, inducing labor, etc., that may seem uh, a little unrealistic. But the pruritus... The intensity of the pruritus is said to be so much that sometimes the patients contemplate even suicide. So it is so intense and therefore uh, one may have to inter intervene and deliver the baby. More concerning is, uh, of course, the fetal consideration that even with modern treatment, risk of fetal demise can range from 2 to 11 percent, which is very high. And a significant rise in bile acids or persistent increase in transamine is despite adequate use also the oxycholic acid treatment, also also treatment should prompt consideration for delivery. So bile acids, uh, even if they are increasing uh, to a reasonable level, there is hardly a, a fetal demise or fetal problem before 36 weeks, but that can happen if the disease is uh, of uh, severer nature. Uh, in this one study, it was seen that uh, if uh, the bile acid level was uh, up to 40 or more micromoles per liter, then there was a uh, intense of meconium staining of amniotic fluid in the placenta and fetal asphyxia was also more commonly seen at, at those levels. And in another study, it was found that uh, uh, although meconium staining was more at 40 and those, but uh, in that study, some of the patients were seen even at 100 or more micromoles per liter level. And uh, then, of course, uh, the risk of stillbirth was higher. So 40 would be a reasonable limit or cut of line. 40 micromoles per liter of bile acids should be the cut of uh, 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 level of bile acids at which you can maybe if... Uh, uh, taking into consideration uh, fetal prematurity, one can wait for a little while, but if you see that uh, the levels are worsening, then it would be appropriate to induce. The possibility of sudden fetal death, sometimes within hours of normal uh, assessment of the fetal parameters. And uh, the mechanism of uh, fetal death is said to be that there is... Uh, crossing of taurocholate into the fetal compartment and uh, when it gets into fetal circulation it can cause fetal arrhythmias and uh, decrease contractility of uh, the fetal heart. On the other hand there can be uh, by exposure to these uh, bile acids there can be chorionic vein constriction leading to hypoxia of the uh, fetus and that can of course result in 
uh, an acute episode resulting in fetal demise. But it uh, occurs uh, less commonly or rarely before 36 weeks of gestation and therefore general recommendation is that uh, the delivery should be conducted at uh, 37 weeks. Monitoring uh, is twice weekly by CTG and uh, umbilical artery Doppler uh, uh, because uh, changes in umbilical artery Doppler uh, show earlier than uh, the changes in CTG. And uh, the current consensus about monitoring is that uh, this should be done twice weekly, uh, CTG twice weekly and uh, with or without Doppler and induction at 37 weeks. In, that is in addition to estimation of bile acids. Uh, antenatal testing is non-stress test, umbilical artery Doppler biophysical profile. And uh, in another study, intense fetal testing was done by admitting the patient and uh, then assessing fetal lung maturity, which we do not these days do because we use dexamethasone quite often. And this was the point that was uh, discussed last time also about LS ratio, etc. So, in that intense kind of uh, uh, fetal testing or uh, monitoring, uh, the patient was admitted or patient has to be admitted in the hospital, continuous fetal heart monitoring and delivery between 36 and 37 weeks. And that was seen in that particular study to have reduced significantly the fetal mortality. Uh, yeah, 100 micromoles there is that study which shows that so if by mistake you say that 100 micromoles so you can refer to that study that uh, that also has been shown to be the cutoff point but i would keep my cutoff point as 40 uh, micromoles the drug of choice uh, also uh, the oxycholic acid or also as we say the dose 15 milligram per kilogram body weight or it can be within the range of 600 to milligram to 2 grams per day in single or divided doses, generally divided doses. It reduces pruritus and also decreases the total uh, serum bile acid levels or, and other uh, uh, transaminases levels, bilirubin level also. So overall liver function is improved by also deoxycholic acid. This is uh, uh, actually is found in certain herbal medicines and has been used in uh, China for centuries, uh, this particular compound for liver disorders. And because of that, since it will uh, benefit the liver functions, it will reduce the uh, bile acids also. So the noxious agents which can lead to fetal hypoxia, since they are reduced by this drug, Therefore, you can prolong the pregnancy to a level where there will be sufficient maturity for the baby to be delivered. And it doesn't have, uh, has been shown to have any maternal uh, adverse effects. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, in, in a study, 26 children were followed for up to 12 years after birth and there were no long-term consequences of that. Delivery commonly recommended at 37 weeks due to increased risk of fetal mortality. Although that is mentioned in uh, uh, this uh, paper of uh, 2019, but that doesn't really relate to us. So some providers are now waiting till 38, 39 weeks gestation to deliver if there is resolution of pruritus symptoms with treatment and bile acids levels are not significantly elevated. That is, they are not more than 40 micromoles. But uh, in uh, the presence of all that evidence, I, I personally wouldn't want to take even 1% chance of uh, or even less than 1% chance of fetal demise because of rising levels or even these high levels of bile acids. And therefore, I, I will deliver and induce the patient in 37 weeks. Complications, uh, maximum they can happen because of uh, uh, some coagulation problems and there can be bleeding. That, that can be covered by injection vitamin K. Follow-up, serum bile acid levels and LFTs should be repeated uh, three to six months after delivery. So uh, if they are found to be raised, then other uh, 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 assessment of the liver function should be done by a hepatologist. 
OCP um, uh, previously used to be strictly contraindicated, com particularly combined uh, contraceptive pill. But uh, nowadays, uh, uh, some people have started recommending low estrogen dose uh, OCP, uh, even uh, patients with history of ICP. And uh, it is not considered to be a total or complete contraindication. Subsequent pregnancies, the recurrence rate is 45 to 70 percent. Or we know that now because of genetic, hormonal, or environmental uh, factors, the, those patients would be more predisposed to develop this, and uh, they would be uh, uh, there would be greater likelihood of their developing it. But not all of them in subsequent pregnancies do have ICP, and they can be uh, free of that. Therefore, it is essential that when in a subsequent pregnancy or uh, someone who gives history of ICP in previous pregnancy, you have baseline bile acid levels and liver enzymes. Uh, on that, you can build up that whether there is any uh, problems or issues which are occurring. And uh, they, these tests can be repeated if there are symptoms which are suggestive of developing ICP. And uh, therefore, also, one would uh, remain alive to uh, development of any pruritus during the course of pregnancy. And if uh, any of such things happens, so that you can start uh, Urso as early as possible. Thank you. Ye to tha ho gaya pura. Main jaldi se aapko panch slides aur dikhana chahta hu. Ye hai aur jo rashes hote hain pregnancy mein. Ek to hai ye skin eruptions ka. Is tarah se ye heat rash jisko prickly heat bolte hain. This is folliculitis. Pictures hain aur kuch hai. We should remember that because when we uh, look at those rashes, we should be able to differentiate within them. This is hives. This is Brigo and atopic eruption of pregnancy. This is this is pup, which is pruritic articarial papules and plaques uh, of pregnancy. Their uh, appearance is quite uh, um, uh, typical. This is a pemphigoid gestationist. And this is impetigo herpetiformis, quite widespread condition. So these are a few conditions which uh, I can uh, and I will actually uh, put this presentation on your uh, site and you can share it with others. Thank you. Challenge. Any comments, any questions? Hello, sir. Route of delivery of cesarean or whether normal? No, uh, uh, demise uh, 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 if there is no contraindication to vaginal delivery, because that will be obstetrically uh, dictated. If there is no contraindication to vaginal delivery, then labor should be induced at 36, uh, 37 weeks. So induction of labor. Uh, but of course, uh, cesarean section would be carried out on its own merits. But ICP per se is no uh, uh, an uh, indication for cesarean section. Role for uh, steroids, uh, uh, dexamethasone is one drug which has been uh, uh, recommended uh, in uh, uh, is one of the drugs like uh, polystyramine. Uh, 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 yeah, Phenobarbitone, uh, steroids, uh, dexamethasone, uh, but they, they are, have not been found to be effective in uh, improving liver functions or otherwise. Uh, dexamethasone has been given even up to the dosage of 12 milligram uh, 6 hourly, that's four times a day, but not that doesn't really make much difference. Um, uh, similarly, phenobarbitone for itching and pruritus. In some cases, it is effective, but it also causes uh, the side effect of sleepiness. Uh, uh, therefore, steroids, I would say the role of steroid would be for fetal lung maturity. Um, um, that is that if you find that the patient has uh, ICP at 35 weeks, you would give uh, steroids for lung maturity and test uh, liver functions. And if there is 
indication for delivery even before 37 weeks, then uh, with that steroid cover, you can do that. Mechanism of IUD. Yes, meconium staining of liquor, but uh, uh, the transfer of taurocollate into the fetal circulation, which causes, which affects the fetal heart. And uh, uh, they, they, they can uh, cause arrhythmias of fetal heart, number one. Number two, uh, the umbilical vessels, particularly umbilical uh, arteries, they are prone to constriction when they are exposed to bile acids within the amniotic fluid. And it has been found that uh, uh, there is passage of high concentrations of bile acids. When there are high concentrations in maternal circulation, there is transfer of those into the meconium. Among preterm labor, meconium staining and IUD, which complication is most common, fetal complication, if I was to choose one. Well, in that, uh, uh, earlier on, uh, you see, meconium staining can be there. You can't really say one, but uh, one would like to deliver the baby before there is IUD. Bile acids and bile salts. Uh, well, um, I, I think you have to go to Google to find them because they are two different, uh, distinct, uh, those things. Um, my, uh, when I was going through this uh, presentation, I also thought of that. But uh, then I would have had to go through the whole liver function. Um, I didn't have time nor the inclination of do doing that. But I think the very good question, Sadia Green, that you have asked, and uh, I would be looking forward to your research on that and uh, uh, you send it to me. Similarly, I was quite uh, intrigued by the storocolates, et cetera, et cetera. And I wanted to go into that. But, you know, um, uh, I am a little off biochemistry, but uh, this is this is interesting. I'd be looking forward to your response. And the, before in, uh, induction therapy, uh, we do amniocent. Well, no, we do not do uh, fetal, uh, that's uh, an issue which we discussed last time. Uh, Americans are quite fond of uh, LS ratio, but you know, LS ratio, they're, they're, uh, I have a couple of papers which show, uh, are LS ratio tests dead now or are they of any use? Because nowadays, uh, there was that uh, study which showed that between 2006 and 16, the request for LS ratio uh, to the labs decreased uh, tremendously. And uh, the number of tests that labs were uh, performing was much less. And that perhaps is uh, because of uh, uh, the uh, so widespread use of uh, uh, steroids, uh, dexamethasone or prednisolone for fetal lung maturity. You know, I, I recall from 80s and 90s, when LS ratio was so uh, fashionable and was mentioned, we weren't doing it in Pakistan even at that time. But at that time, we also weren't using dexamethasone or prednisolone for fetal lung maturity. So it is around that time when it was realized that uh, these steroids will help fetal lung maturity and uh, reduce uh, the effects of prematurity uh, to a great extent that uh, the, uh, uh, the tendency to do LS ratio uh, uh, kind of uh, withered away. And uh, any role of vitamin K in baby? I think it is generally safe to give a dose of vitamin K to mother and to the baby as well. Uh, the reason for that, there is no harm because uh, uh, in some units, there used to be a routine for giving injection vitamin K to the baby as, as a matter of routine always. So in these cases, uh, or to err on the safer side would be uh, okay. History of previous ICP in this uh, monitoring, with which tremor? Well, if uh, history of ICP is something which you should ask about in the first trimester in a multigravid patient, uh, and this should be part of the, uh, or if there is any, like you ask about any rash or itching, etc. So similarly, you can ask about, was there any issue or the patient may give history that she was induced at 37 weeks and you will ask, why was that done? And that uh, uh, history would be forthcoming spontaneously. Uh, yes, if you start vitamin K at 36 weeks, the dose generally is 10 milligram per day, orally. No, Yusuf Sahib, welcome, Dr. Yusuf. Assalamu alaikum.
वालेकुम अस्सलाम मैं अब इजाजत चाहूंगा और आप देख हेल्प वो हेल्प के बाकी चीजें भी करवाओगे ना थैंक यू